Dowling High School, a tradition that has existed at 1000 College Avenue for nearly half a century has passed out of existence. Through its long and proud lifetime, many records were kept of Dowling's great accomplishments. Clippings of newspapers, volumes of yearbooks, and piles of old Aquins remind us of what once was. Yet one memento was never saved, the sounds of Dowling. Although this record may never preserve all the sounds of Dowling, it will remind you, the listener, of the happy and meaningful times that you experienced at that school. Dowling meant many things to many people. To some people, Dowling was football, basketball, or track. To others, it symbolized just friends, good times, and something to do all day. To everyone, though, it had to mean classes. Whether religion, art, or chemistry, we all attended. Some memories were good, others bad, yet it was a time we would not soon forget. Walking down the corridors of Boylan Hall, we were very likely to hear the clicking of the typewriters. Certain classes were almost traditions at Dowling, such as one priest telling of the bustling metropolis of Churchville. Science, no doubt, presented some of the greatest challenges at Dowling, most of which involved trying to understand a lecture. This way. Now, later on, when it was found that it's the electrons which are actually doing the moving, they still stayed with this convention. And that might seem like it's stupid. However, there happen to be now, you know, with transistors, semiconductors, uh, with actual beams of protons, for instance, and accelerators, there are just as many cases, particularly inside of electrical devices, where you have positive charges moving as negative charges moving. Other times, experiments were the call for the day. I got an exciting one. Okay, place a magnetic compass over... Right. Place a magnetic compass over a long piece of wire and momentarily touch the two ends of the wire to the terminals of a dry cell. Hold it, hold it. I take it, this is our dry cell. I take it. Okay. What's this thing? That's the compass. That's, very good. That's our wire. What's this? That's the thing we string around. Did you go north? Was that way? This compass is getting real screwed up. <laughs> it's being tracked to your head. No, it's not. No, no, north is that way. You can see the arrow. See, he's getting smart about That's not right. North is that way. North. That's north. This compass is that north. Way is that north. That way is that way. I know. See the end? North is that way. What's it say now, did they jump? You changed okay. it. Okay. Place a magnetic That's compass right. over a long piece of wire. Oh, I see. All right. Come on, I'm going to face north. Okay, there's the compass. Place oh, it on man. top of the wire. Get your mitts off. <laughs> I think you're doing. In other words, bad. take wire. <laughs> no. He's right. Eventually He's right. and occasionally, the, the experiment did get done. And then dump the Every morning, afternoon, 
and a half dozen times in between, classes such as these were interrupted by a doorbell-like melody which seemed hilariously out of place. The announcements followed, oft times equally hilarious. Morning announcements at this time. The homeroom representatives please report to the student government office to pick up the information in regard to the yearbook taking, which will be today. Dowling won an important track meet yesterday, defeating Lincoln and North. Dowling came in first with a score of 87, Lincoln 79, and North 18. Pat Nizzi equaled the school record in the 180 yard low hurdles, running a time of 20 seconds flat. Dowling won four of the five relay races. Jim Conway won the 100-yard dash, the 220 dash, and brought the mile relay into a second-place finish. The next meet will be the Drake Relays. Father Pfeffer has information about two different high school Europe tours and study programs for this summer. Youth for Understanding, exchange program in which you live with a family for two months. The other program is a six-week travel study program with a foreign study league. Students from other high schools in Des Moines will also be on the tour. For information about either one of these programs, please contact Father Pfeffer in room A. Tennis today, Dowling versus East at 3 o'clock at Good Park. The tennis players are to be dismissed at 2.30 and be at Good Park before 3 o'clock. Prom tickets are now on sale. The seniors can buy tickets from Tim Harrington, Tom Warner, Kevin McCarthy, Pat Desmond, Chris Nelson, or John Maurer. The juniors can buy the prom tickets from Tom Deal or Paul DePhillips. Summer school this summer at Valley High School in West Des Moines, Des Moines starts June the 5th and ends the last day of July. Those students whose names do not appear on the sign-up sheet should contact the Father Chamberlain's office to make sure that their name, address, birth date, and telephone number is sent out to the uh, Valley High School by the end of this week. That's all the announcements. Thank you. No discussion of the old Dowling would be complete without a visit to that most exciting and feared of places with which most students were so very familiar, the Dean's Office. Dean's Office. Thank you. Dean's Office. Yes. Joe who? Yes, Joe. Who, who uh, is your driver, Joe? Mike Martin. Okay. Uh, so you're going to get here as soon as you can, right? There isn't. Hmm. Well, I wonder what uh, what the problem is. Did you call the Martins? Yeah. Are they home? Well, I tell you what. Uh, why don't you call and have uh, explain that to your mother and. Uh, then have her call me back. Thank you. Hello. Why? That's fine. Dean's office. Holy cow. Okay. Let's hold it. But Dowling was much more than its curricula and the administration of that curricula. Outside activities both scholastic and athletic, flourished with a reputation extending far beyond Iowa's borders. We now listen to the television announcement of just one of the state debate championships Dowling earned in the last four consecutive years of its existence. You have just heard the championship debate of the Iowa High School Speech Association. The four gentlemen from Dowling defending the affirmative and the four young ladies from Ottumwa defending the negative in the state championship debate. These two teams were the two finalists of 114 high schools entered in debate this year. The judges' ballots have been presented to me, and with a unanimous decision, three decisions, the championship is awarded to Dowling High School of Des Moines. Our congratulations to them. Even better known was the reputation of Dowling's football team. Excerpts from Coach Williams' pregame talk to the team and the sideline excitement following 
illustrate the work and devotion which made Dowling one of the state's foremost football powers. You know, we started about uh, August 20th. You guys started long before August 20th. And everything comes down to 48 minutes, doesn't it? And really what it comes down to is more than that. It comes down to, I think, which team is going to want the state championship the most. And I don't think there's any question in my mind how much it means to you men. I think you'd do almost anything to get it. I think you're very tense, I think you're very nervous, and this is all right because tense and nervous people can play very, very well. But I just want you to know that as a football team, I've been very proud to have been associated with you. I can't say win, lose, or draw tonight that you haven't done everything we've asked of you and more. I can't say that you haven't been as fine a group of people to work with as any of the, our coaches staff and myself have had to be involved with. Now tonight it comes down to the final moment and I know that every one of you can look at your season and say to yourself, I've played well all year, but I've got that one ball game left in which I think I can play better, just a little bit better than I have in my best. And I think if every one of you do this tonight and tell yourself right now, I know you've been telling yourself all day, this is going to be the best effort that I possibly could give to win a football game for myself as an individual. If 22 of you do that, and 44 of you do that, and I mean on special teams, I mean on everything, fellas, there's no doubt about the outcome. If you promise yourself that, you owe that much to your teammates. You owe that much to the student body that supports you and the fans that come to see you. You owe that much to yourself. Never give it any less tonight. And you know, I'm getting a little tired of uh, the insults, the fingers, the derogatory remarks, the innuendos that generally comes from the times you play Sioux City Helan. And I'd just like to show these people once and for all what a solid ass whipping looks like with some of the toughest football they've ever seen. I know Mr. Mollett said they can score on us. I don't think he can. I don't think he's going to get near the end zone. I know they feel that their defense is strong. I think we're capable of scoring five times offensively at least. One time on defense we're going to score tonight. One punt we're going to return tonight. We're going to do everything tonight that we haven't done in every ball game put together. We're going to put it all into one ball game tonight. So as you go on out, think about what you're going to do. Think about concentration. Don't make a mistake tonight. Remember, you're playing away from home. The officials will be very concerned about little things like a mouthpiece being out. Three years ago up here, we lost a drive because a fullback just hung his mouth out, a piece out, and the quarterback sneaked, you see. Don't make any of the little mistakes tonight that can kill drives or keep drives going for them. The piling penalties, you know, the face masks, the clipping, the things that can keep drives going and give up the football. But I know this, and I, I mean it sincerely. There's no doubt in my mind about the outcome of this ball game. We didn't come 200 and some odd miles to play before 12,000 people, including everybody from East Waterloo that came up to see the ball game, to come up here and look like the number three or four team in the state. This is the number one team in the state. You've proved it week in and week out. You've got to prove it once more. But that's what football and that's what life is. You keep proving how good you are every week. You keep rising to new heights. You keep working harder. Fellas, nobody has worked harder than you people have. Helan hasn't. I can assure you that. Nobody gets worked harder than you people do. It's all for a purpose. Tonight's the purpose. For 48 minutes, don't hold anything back. Let's say a prayer and let's go out and have a good one. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Now we're
we're saying two prayers tonight because we don't get to go to the chapel as we normally do. After this prayer, I'd like the team just to stay here for a second. I'd like the captains to talk to you for a moment, and when you guys are ready to come on out, come on out. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, captains, talk to them, and come on out when you're ready. Hey, guys. Donnie, get him back. Okay, come on, people. 24 minutes. We got 24 minutes. Come on! Let's get it done. Let's go. Let's go. Cover it hard now. Get us that break. Get us that break. Now. Come on! Come on, Billy! Let's get back, boys. Get back. All the way back. All the way back. All the way back, boys. Thank you, thank you. Let's go! Cover hard! Cover hard! Cover it, cover it! Perhaps one of the most exciting times of the week came every Friday. Then, 900 people piled into the gym, and a clamor of voices arose that would surely blow the roof off. The tradition, the Dowling Pep Assembly.
before we get to the... Before we get to the... assembly part of the thing uh, I want to make a few announcements Hi. so I'll get these announcements over it and then we'll get to the pep assembly first of all student council meeting Sunday at 430 everybody should be there uh, secondly uh, we have an election going on for those people that don't know it at Dowling, and there's uh, only about 600 people that have voted. That means only two-thirds of the student bodies voted today. And there's three people who want president. There's a lot of people that want to be elected. There's a lot of people that want to be elected to office in this school, and it's just too bad the students are so apathetic about student council that they can't even take a piece of paper and vote. You'll have the opportunity to vote after school over in the old dean's office, the guidance office. I hope everybody turns out and votes and they can give the president of the second semester the same support you've given me. Tonight's mixer, uh, the Echoes Limited will be playing from 9 to 12. The uh, rule change uh, that will be in effect tonight is that no one can go out until 11 p.m. after they've come in unless they're going to be leaving. Today. be more disagreement about that rule and others in the future, but we'll take care of that at a later time. First of all, right now, because of their great victory last night over Tech, I'd like to introduce the coach of the swimming team, Coach Trusty. <laughs> Gentlemen, uh, I've had two occasions to be in front of the student body. One was to ask support for a win. We won without the support. Tonight, we're here to, to introduce to you the gentleman on the swimming team, I guess, for the reason is four years ago, I was told it was impossible to beat any other team that had a pool. Last night, these gentlemen, regardless of their... I trust you gentlemen would like to get out of here. Um, la la last night, these gentlemen won despite the fact of the odds against them, and I would like at this time to introduce the members of the 1971-72 swimming team. First of all, first of all, our only, our only senior, Tom Friend, our... 
our juniors. Gentlemen, hold your applause, please. My training has told me not to try to talk over you people, and I refuse to try. Yeah, real funny. You've learned something in three or four years. Now, the juniors are um, John Wiesenberg, Barry Tingliff, um, who else? That's, the, that's all the juniors. Ralph is not with us anymore. Ralph bit the dust. Southmores, Matt Lawler, <laughs> Tim Grishella, uh Mark Pearson. Hmm, I can't remember. Who are the other Southmores? Oh, yeah, Bob Mueller. The freshman, um, Dave Bruce, John Stark, uh, Jim Pritchard. One more, Chris Woodward. Oh, Steve Miller. For, sorry about that, Steve. Jim Barrett and Steve Miller. And James Wiesenberg. Gentlemen, these. Greg Funk, is he here? Hey, all right. These gentlemen did something last night that I personally didn't think was possible. They beat a conference team. Uh, and for that, I, I'm deeply grateful. These represent your, uh, your school and the Dowling swimming team. Thank you. got an important game in the Metro over Roosevelt and Coach Hayes had a few things to say about tonight's game. Coach. This will be a very. Sh <laughs> this will be a very short, gentlemen. It's uh, the bell is rung, and I know you want to get home to get on your books and studies and everything. But uh, <laughs> the only thing is, uh, I think uh, today, for the first time, with the exception of a few squirrels. But I think, with the exception of a few of you, uh, you, for the first time, have displayed a little bit of enthusiasm about uh, winter sports. Now, I just wonder how long is it going to last? Uh, tonight, for example, we're playing Roosevelt at Roosevelt, and not too many teams beat Roosevelt in the Roosevelt gym. And tonight, I would like to ask you, I'm not going to beg you, I'm going to ask you to come out and support a team that deserves some support. Now this is the same team, fellas, that started out the year with two losses. And of course, a lot of you, after we got whipped the first time, you disappeared, the Fairweather fans. But then we came back and we whipped North High, who was ranked in the top 10, the number five team in the state at that time. We came back the next week and played Tech, a pretty good ball game in their gym. Then since then, we have won three in a row. Now, we are in no position. I'm not gonna beg you guys to come out and support this team. But I'll tell you this, if you don't come out and start supporting this team, then you guys, uh, when I have you in class, and when I see you in a hall, and stuff like this, don't come up to me and, uh, let's quiet down a minute, will you please? You know, it's amazing. The guys, the first guys to start criticizing athletes are the guys that don't know a jock strap from a slingshot. <laughs> You 
You know, if, uh, if you guys were just as good of athlete as supposedly you'd like to let us know, my God, we would be all state, all national, all universe and everything around here. <laughs> Fellas, what I'm asking is this. I think we, we deserve your support. We're playing a tough team tonight. Roosevelt is no slouch. They have a very fine team, and there's a few things you should keep in mind. Uh, the winner of tonight's game, Roosevelt and Dowling right now are tied for third place with a three and two record. If we win tonight, we get third place all to ourselves. Next week, Tech plays North High. Tech and North are in first place. If we win tonight and win next week against Lincoln, we got second place. Fellas, we're on our way, and uh, I think we could use a little accompaniment. I would like to see you tonight fill up that Roosevelt gym, because I tell you this, Roosevelt gets a crowd, and our, our team and coaching staff, we have to sit in front of that Roosevelt crowd tonight. And you guys don't know what it's like to sit in front of an opposing team's crowd. Those of you who weren't down there at Tech High a couple weeks ago had to listen to stuff we had to listen to down there, and then look across the floor and see maybe 25 Dowling fans there and wonder what's going to happen if anything happens. Uh, <laughs> fellas, we'd like to have a little support tonight. I tell you this, I'll guarantee you this. If you feel that Roosevelt gym tonight, we have approximately 850 people here. If we can get 600 of you, plus let's bring in 500 snickets from the academy. <laughs> but, let's hold up, hold up. But I, I guarantee you this. If we get a thousand people there tonight pushing for Dowling High, we'll beat Roosevelt. You be there, please. I can only echo what's been said and say that today's kind of a turning point because the second semester is starting pretty soon for athletics and for school itself. And if we turn out tonight, start supporting our sports, and this weekend for hockey, next weekend for wrestling and swimming, then we're going to have a good second semester. And that's how we can make Dowling, Dowling really great, not just for half a semester, but for the whole year. And this is the last year, so let's make it great. We'll see you tonight then. Dowling High School is gone. Fifty years of tradition have ended. Yet a new school has arisen, one that retains the name of Dowling. The question is whether the new school will retain the tradition. Only time will tell.